Who needs a birthday card idea? Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my studio. Wait, no. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Still getting used to the space, clearly. Today I have another new release from me. It's a big old birthday set. It's literally called Big Old Birthday. And I'm gonna create a really fun birthday card that also features a cling stamp that I designed for Simon Says Stamp. So to see that card project, stick around. It's coming up next. Here's a look at the products I'm going to be using today. This is a new stamp set that I designed called Big Old Birthday. And it's just a lovely little set of birthday greetings. So glad you were born. Birthday wishes, let's celebrate. I love the little heart at the end. You age like a fine wine, which would go very well with my wine glass die cut. Just saying, might have something planned for that later. Big B-Day vibes, oh happy day and birthday love that you can mix and match with, sending some birthday love, happy birthday, birthday love for you. So a little bit of font mishmash here for different vibes and different feelings, plus some sub greetings that are kind of fun and there are coordinating dies to cut pretty much everything out. So there's that and then I don't do a lot of cling stamps but I thought this was kind of fun and I just wanted to do something that put down more color and this is called angularium. I don't know, I just, I made that up. I made that word up, so <laughs> there you go. And I'm going to create something with my oxide. So we're gonna start out with some stamping. I wanna create some sort of fun background and then top it with a greeting. So let's get started. I'm gonna take my insert out of my Misty. Take my little tape, come on now. And I will set this aside. You have to take the inserts out when you're using any of the red rubber cling because they are thicker. So I'm just gonna pop it right into the center like that. I like to press my paper into the stamp itself. So what I'll do, just take a little low tack tape and one there, one there to hold it nicely and then pick it up with the misty door and that way it will stay nicely in place as I add color. So I have my Simon Says Stamp brushes here that I use for oxides. I do keep a separate set of brushes just for oxide inks because of the, you know, the pigment quality, right? And I'm going to be creating a blend and I hope this works. But here's the thing, I guess it doesn't really matter where I start, like I could start here or I could start here. You know what, let me get my red brush out. I'm using Lumberjack Plaid because I love this color and I think, I think I'm gonna start down here and go up because then I can flip the design if I want. But the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of rub on some of the Lumberjack Plaid, right? Like that. And then I'm just gonna blend it a little like this, right? Just to kind of smooth it out. Now look at that. I think I'm gonna potch more right in there. So this is sort of a combination of, you know, stamping and ink blending and I, I don't know. I haven't done this in a while. So let's see what happens. All right, bringing in my stamping bug and transferring the ink. Let's see what happens. Hey, look at that. Now that's funky. Funky but chic. Okay, we're gonna add more to deepen that up a bit. And tap on it to soften, right? And repeat. So this is what I'm gonna do for all the colors. And I'm not going to clean my cling stamp off in between, right? Because I really wanna preserve that color transition. So again, darken it up and I'm crop, I'm gonna crop this of course. So we're not gonna get all of that in there, but we're gonna get some. See how it deepens every time? That's all we're doing. I'm gonna get one more here, actually. Like that. Okay. Soften and press. All right. Now we'll move on to the second color, which is picked raspberry. I wanted a really bold pink. So again, I think here, I'm gonna kind of angle my pad a little. 
like this at first, just to kind of give myself that line that I want. And then I'm gonna try to just put some on here and see what happens this way, right? Just kind of smush that on like that and then tap over that transition line. Let's see what happens. Pick up and press. Ooh, I like, I like it. All right, I'm gonna put some music on. This is the process that we're gonna do for the rest of it. Speed it up and you can watch the magic unfold. quite get that done because I couldn't put the right amount of pressure. So I think if I were to do this again, I would put the cling in the center just to have more clearance. But see how funky that is? You just keep working it until it looks kind of how you want it to look. And then what I'm going to do, I think, is take a little water, get a paper towel here, and I'm just going to put some in my hand, sprinkle some on, and just put a few flicks on here. Nothing, nothing too dramatic, right? Just to get a little oxide reaction in a few locations. Actually, that looks nice, not too much. Maybe a little more up there, like that. All right, then I can unpeel this. I'm here now, jewels, not tools. All right, lift and I'm gonna set this aside to dry because I will be cutting it out, but for now, we'll set it aside. Take my tape, and I wanna show you something kinda of cool. I'm going to just wipe really quickly most of this off the stamp. I could have probably sprinkled some water on here and made another print, but you know what? <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I just gotta stay focused on one card at a time. However, check this out. To quickly clean this, I can put it over here just to get it off this surface. And I've got a lot of oxide on here now, but I'll just wipe that down, right? That looks pretty good. But then to get a really great clean of my red rubber cling, I'm gonna take my new Hero Scrubber Block, give that a little spritz, and just get inside the nooks and crannies of this stamp. Oh, I love this thing. And there we go. It just gets everything clean. The scrubbers get in and that way I know the next time I go to use my cling, it will be clean and ready for stamping. All right, moving on. I think I'm gonna stamp a couple of greetings that way, you know, if I feel like using one and not the other. I can, and I, I like doing that sometimes, you know, like having some backups, seeing what you like the best. I'm gonna stamp that one. So glad you were born, because I absolutely love that greeting. Just do them all at once. And this is Simon Says Stamp Black Cardstock. Okay. Pick up the stamps. I think I have plenty of 
clearance there. Clearance, clearance, yes indeed, okay. Now, before I get too far into this, I'm gonna just rub my finger over it to prime them a bit because they're new. They always have that little coating left on and just kind of just kind of rub it until it turns a little cloudy. Let me take some anti-static powder here and just go all over my paper. And this is just to remove static and oil from where I've touched and gotten things on, especially with dark cardstock. I, I like to powder it up and then try not to touch it. <laughs> Do my best. All right, get in there. And once I know I'm in the corner and have clearance for clearance, I'm going to ink up with Versamark. That was aggressively loud, okay. All right, and this is just clear embossing ink. Of course, I could have done this in white pigment ink too. I didn't think about that. Hmm. I did a video test on that and it really does work well, but you know, let's try this for today. Okay, bringing it down. And of course, as you noticed, I put my insert pad back in because we are using regular clear stamps that are thinner in depth. All right, let's see how that goes. Lift. I could definitely give, that one looks pretty good. Birthday wishes in the middle. Could probably use more. And I'll just do a light tap on that. Again, you can stamp right in the same place which is, well, it's a beautiful thing. And this tool that I'm pressing on just gives me that nice even wrist position to press and transfer ink. I still feel like birthday wishes in the middle is not great. I think it's because of my tape. So let's try one more time. We'll just focus in and I'll just use thumbs. Sometimes the thumbs or where the magic is. Much better. All right, let's add our powder. I've got my little folded piece of paper, my paper catch, and I'm gonna use Ultra Fine Antique Gold Powder from Simon Says Stamp, one of my favorite golds, and just sprinkle it on to the greetings. And then hopefully, because of the anti-static powder, I won't have a ton sticking to my cardstock, right? We'll just let that slide off. Ooh, that looks pretty good. All right. Uh, gosh, I don't think it needs more. That looks real good. All right, I'm going to funnel this back in very simply like this. And I'm gonna grab my Swiffer cloth. I actually finally went to the grocery store and got some replacements. <laughs> And I always, if I'm using this paper catch for more than once, which I tend to do, I always wipe off the gold or any colored powder just so that it doesn't contaminate the next project. I don't even think, well, maybe I'll brush a little away. You can just look for any areas where there might be a little powder that you don't want because gold on black really does show up, but that actually looks really clean. Let's heat up our tool and melt the powder. Look at that. That is some shiny gold goodness. And the thing is, when you do this, if you do multiples, then you can make more cards or you can just keep a little bin of greetings that you've already done that are ready to go for another card. So let me get my dies ready for cutting these out. If your dies come tabbed like our dies at Simon Says Stamp, you just need to use some sort of little snipping tool. This is the Beetalon. There's also a good one from Hero Arts, or you can just bend them apart. I tend to want to keep the 
as many together as possible until I'm ready. So I will go ahead and cut these out and then tape them into place. Actually, I wanted to show you something. As soon as your embossing is cool, which is almost immediately, you can just take a lint-free cloth. This is an e-cloth and just go over the cardstock to buff away that extra powder. And if you can still kind of see it, just kind of rub your hand over it. Now it doesn't matter if you get your oils <laughs> all over because now your oils are great. They just really lift that cardstock powder that was excess. And now we're ready to add the dyes. I've got these taped into place. Pop these onto my Let's see, yep, that's, is that the right way? Am I doing it right? I am. Plate, 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 and we'll go over here and run it through. That's my, that's my new Gemini cam, although I think it makes my hand look really ginormous. Oh, all right, back to the table. <laughs> oh my goodness, always something fun in here. Let's see how they look. Oh, they look good. Look at that. Choices galore. All right, I need to cut a panel, however, for my card. So let me get that colorful piece so we can cut that as well. These are my Waffle Flower A2 Layers dies, right? My additional dies. And or, no, are these the additionals? No, these are the regulars. Sorry about that. And this way I can get a crop that incorporates all the color, right? Oh, I like that. I think that's really pretty. And I know it will be big enough for this greeting or for that greeting if I go horizontal or for that greeting. I actually like all of them. So this is not gonna, you know, this is like, it's like choosing the child, you know, <laughs> who's your favorite? Well, I don't know. We'll have to see. Crop looks good. No weirdness. I am going to tape this into place so it doesn't shift. And again, I'll go ahead and cut that out. While I'm doing this, I think it would be fun to have a very thin mat. So I cut this with my regular A2 layers dies, but then there's this set called additional layers. And each one is in between all of the other sizes. So if you do this, you literally get every possible size that you could cut a mat to. This will give me the nicest thin mat. So let me cut that out really quickly so I can show you how nice it fits. So now you can see I'm gonna get the nicest little thin black mat, which is gonna be great because it's totally going to pick up the black cardstock that I have stamped my greetings on. And it's a little nod to the one and only Gina K design. So I love how Gina always does her signature little black mats. Also, I love her tape runner. Okay, doesn't I guess it doesn't really matter top to bottom, side to side but I'm gonna see if I can get this on even, Steven, breathing. Okay, let's see, are you? Sometimes it is hard for me to, no, that's terrible. Hold on, I'm gonna stand up. <laughs> Can't do it, cannot do this sitting down. Forgive my head, it will get in the way, but I have a human head and it is large. All right, let's see, is that better? Yes, yes. You know what? I'm getting really picky here. Let me stand completely over it. You won't even see me do this now. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Yay! Now I'm gonna put some foam tape on the back of this panel. I'm just about done with one of my big mama rolls. I burned through this stuff, I'm telling you. But you know, you could do fun foam too. Fun foam is much more affordable. I just never get it and I just, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't have, I don't, I don't. This is where I spend my money, foam tape. Because ain't nobody giving this away for free. Okay, there we go. That is my panel. Now we have to decide, okay? It could go many ways. Now I think already I am leaning towards, so glad you were born. I love that sentiment for birthdays because it's true. Like I'm really glad that people were born. I could go this way or 
this way with birthday wishes. That's actually really pretty too. Or of course, we could go big B-Day vibes. All of them show this off really well. Let me know in the comments what your choice would have been because I need to think about this for about 30 seconds off camera. I think I'm drawn to this one. I just put some foam tape on the back, the very last of my foam tape. I think I just like how it fills the space so nicely and I will set these aside because they're beautiful and can be used on something else. But let's make a note card and I am gonna go with white cardstock because then that will have a nice little visual design connection to the open spaces from the Angularium stamp. So let's go ahead, this is eight and a half by five and a half. I'm gonna score it at four and a quarter inches. A nice score line in there. And fold that down. Give this a nice press with my Teflon bone folder. If you're ever wondering why so many people love Nina Solar White Classic Crest, I, I'm only one person, but the thing that I love most about it, it does not crack when you, when you score it and fold it. And it just is just the most smooth folds. Oh, it's a beautiful paper. All right, let's build the card. I'm gonna take the backers off and pop it down. And we'll just pop this right in the center of the note card. Oh, there's the head again. And that looks great. Take the backers off of the greeting and I will grab my T-square for this just because this little friend really does help, uh, helps you to see what you're doing. Little liquid glue for some float time, okay? Just, just because foam tape sticks immediately hard and fast and I feel like if you, if you go with the uh, little bit of glue, don't press just yet, right? Then you can bring in your ruler. You can make sure that's perfectly straight. And I think that's, I think we are good to go. Isn't that cute? Ah! Let me get, oh, I wanna show you something actually that's new. If you love the idea of a T-square, but wish you had one that was bigger, check it out. Ooh, we have introduced at Simon Says Stamp the 12 inch T-square, which would be great for larger cards. This would be fantastic for scrapbooking. Uh, and it has the same design, the nice little wide lip and it helps you line things up just like that. Anyway, just wanted to show you, haven't even taken it out of the package yet. There we go. Okay, moving on. I'm just gonna add five gold confetti style sequins. And I actually had someone ask me a question about these sequins once, like where do you put the glue or how do you put them down? You put them down just like you would any sequin with the cup side up. So you want the flat side on the bottom, if that helps. I always assume people know, but you know, there's a lot of things that I do repeat in my videos because I remember what it was like. Boop, Oop, that's, that's smooshed a little. I remember what it was like to be new and not know anything. I just like to use that to kind of wipe it away. And, you know, so I always appreciate, that's why I include, yeah, so many repetitive boop tips. And I say boop, um, because what if you're brand new and you're watching a video for the first time boop, and you're like, what kind of sequins are those? There's no hole in them. Well, yes, they're, oh wait, how do I want to go here? I think I missed that up, up here. They are confetti style like that. I think that's good, right? Like, well, now I'm not sure. I think I placed, no, this is fine. Also, if you find yourself overthinking your sequin placement, just move on. Do it and forget about it. Oh, I did that, okay. Let's go here, little glue, boop. And again, it's the same liquid glue and the little squeeze bottles that I buy, boop, and just refill with my big bottle of Connect Glue. All right, and that, my friends, is the finished card project. I 
love how this turned out. This is so fun, right? It's bold, it's colorful. There's no embossed resist on this, right? And that's what I just wanted to have a pattern that was solid, right? I like that and you can ink blend on it. You can do all kinds of messy crafty things on it. And it would be, depending on the colors you chose, uh, it could be great for so many different types of themes for cards, just for creating a really fun background. You can find links to all of the products I used today in the YouTube description box. I'll also have a link to my blog post if you wanna check that out for more information. If you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and I'll see you back here with another card project soon. For a few more fun birthday card ideas, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I will see you in those videos.